TOTL Total Games in Portland, Oregon is an absolute amazing retro game store experience. You never know what kind of awesome stuff you're going to find. They have a little bit of absolutely everything. I always have to check them out and see what they have in store. It is a really welcoming, awesome space run by people who absolutely love video games. This is their rare item case. They have a Nintendo DS emulator, which is part of the development kit for making Nintendo DS games. That's rare official Nintendo hardware. They have the GameCube OEM component cables and a really nice Hori gamepad. I believe I turned that one into them. And in the back, they have the original Shantae for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and the Piece de Resistance 2799 for Pokemon Box, one of the rarest organized collectors of Game Boy. Over here, they have their trans carts, that is our translated NES games, such as Sweet Home. These are high quality reproductions, Poppin' Magic. Uh, Earthbound Halloween Hack Edition, Ghost Sweeper Makame, then they have some Yu Yu Hakusho, Gambare Gyoman, all three of them, I have those, Dai Katana for Game Boy, that's a, I believe, a homebrew, and then The Simpsons in Streets of Rage 2, Rick Taylor in Streets of Rage 2, Sonic 2 XL, Sonic 2 Pink Edition, and other eight great ROM hacks. Over here is their handheld systems. They have a... a Game Boy Advance SP, original Game Boy Advance with a glass screen. Then they have a really nice Neo Geo Pocket Color for $189. I really miss having one of those. And then they have a box Neo Geo Pocket Color for $315. I really miss that. Game Boy Advance Original for $89. A Wonder Swan Color. I've always been curious about getting into that system. For 519, a really amazing Legend of Zelda 3DS XL, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket for 84, the original OG DMG Game Boy, and a Game Boy Light, which is a Japanese only light up variant of the Game Boy. Then they have their Nintendo consoles, some Wii U, an original Nintendo Entertainment System, next to a GameCube, a Wii Mini, and three Wii systems. Down here they have two N64s, a Super Nintendo Junior, and a Super Nintendo Classic Edition. Over here is their Sega consoles. I see a Sega Dreamcast, Genesis 2, Power Base Converter, Sega Genesis 2, 32X, and a Sega CD2, which looks like they had a new laser installed in. Down here is their Xbox selection, Xbox One OG, Xbox One S, Xbox 360, the Halo Edition, and the R2-D2 Edition of the Xbox 360 Valhalla well, Revision and an Xbox 360S. Over here they have PlayStation 3s and PlayStation 4s, including a pretty sweet looking camo PlayStation 4. Superkin Systems, they have the Retron SQ for playing Game Boy, a, the Retron 77 Atari 2600 clone with the cool Trooper controller, the Retron 
one AV, the Retron 5 for a variety of emulation based systems, and down here they have the hyper various Hyperkin clone consoles, including the Duo, the Black and White, Black and Gold, the Super Retron HD for Super Nintendo, and the Mega Retron for HD for Genesis. Moving on to the Nintendo games, they have Adventure Island 2 for $38, Astyanax for $12, I love that game, Bible Adventures $25, Casino Kid 9, Contra Force 169, Castlevania 3 55, course that does not have the expanded audio like the Famicom version. Iron Sword, nine dollars. Joe and Mac getting up there at 65. And Joshua, the Battle of Jericho. Ice Hockey, eight dollars. Sight bike for twelve. Flappy Bird, sixty-nine dollars. That is a independent game. Doctor Mario for twelve. Kid Nikki the Radical Ninja, seventeen. Love that game. Have it for Famicom. Super Mario Brothers two, twenty-nine dollars. Of course, that's Doki Doki Panic. Metroid, original label. 33 Metroid with a new label 49 definitely pay for that new label which is the exact opposite for punch out over here punch out with mr. dream 24 but punch out with Mike Tyson $54 more people want the Mike Tyson yes they're more nostalgic about that Ooh, Pac-Man didn't see that up there We got Rygar 16, my friend Cub loves that. Roller Games, another awesome Konami only, American only Konami game. Cool spot. Sweet Home, Transcart, Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti, Transcart for $29. TNC Surf Design, love that game. Tetris, Nintendo Tetris, way different than the Famicom version for $14. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game for $19. Bit of a scale down of the arcade, but still, what a classic game. Trojan 14, which is actually the sequel to Kung Fu. Legend of Zelda Gold for six, uh, 30 $39. Legend of Zelda Adventure of Link, $39 for the gold cartridge, $41 for the gray cartridge. But I think I care more about the gold cartridge because that's what I remember. And they got the best retro adapter, import adapter, the Hyperkin one, which is compatible with absolutely everything. This is a um, CRT that I personally donated to the store because every game store should definitely have a good old cathodo ray tube. And moving over to their cords and accessories. I have taken advantage of their good selection including their HDMI products. They have a Neo Geo HDMI, Dreamcast HDMI, Wii HDMI, and many more. I actually really like the Hyperkin and Pound HDMI adapters. Moving on to the Super Nintendo games. I see Act Razor. It's a great game. Breath of Fire for $62. I've always been meaning to get into that. Breath of Fire 2, 108. Two great Capcom RPGs, and if you act, if you actually adjust for the price, that's actually probably cheaper than it was when it was new. Contra 3, 64, Conquer's Hyrule Tale, I believe that's a 
ROM hack with Conkers in Legend of Zelda Land. Actually looks pretty cool. All your Donkey Kong countries. Super 3D Noah's Ark. I believe that's based on the Doom engine. Final Fight. Gambare Gilman Transcarts 3, 4, and 4. Joe and Mac 29, that's a great version. Lethal Enforcers, unfortunately that's the one that Nintendo censored. And not Street Fighter 2, CIB Red Cart version, 125, I believe that's a reprint. Doom, complete in box, 129. Very, very cool. And the Data East Classic Collections. Very glad I got that. Mega Man X Blue Cart 599. Boy, that's a special collector's edition. Collector's a lot of money. Super Mario World. Mega Man X for 45 and X2 for $205. I'm glad I got that for Super Famicom. Your NBA jams. Ooh, the Hyperkin mouse. I have that. It's laser and very cool. And also an explanation of their naming convention. They do not list the Super in Super Nintendo games. Nosferatu for $168. Wow, that has gone up in price. Street Fighter 2 regular edition for $26. Oh, and I love and I hate the Super Nintendo Advantage. I want it to just if they just move the buttons like a traditional Capcom arrangement. But I would have loved to have loved that. That even bugged me as a kid. Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, regular, and other editions. And down here, a Mario paint with the mouse for 65 Then there's the box of Super Nintendo controllers and a very, very yellowed Super Famicom controller. Moving on to the GameCube games. Let's see, I see Animal Crossing there for 62 Animal Hominid for $109. That's really gone up. Dragon Ball Z. I haven't really gotten to those since the 16-bit games. F-Zero for $89. I'm glad I got mine back in the day before that came up. Cubivore for $609. Wow. And a Pokemon Coliseum ba bonus disc for $252. Mario Kart, everyone needs that for $114. That's really gone up in price, but you know what? It's Mario Kart and it's worth it. Kirby's Air Ride, $83. Don't have that. Harvest Moon, Metroid Prime, even though it's been remastered. Ooh, Twin Snakes, $105. Boy, I wish I held on to that. And for a long time, some Mega Man collections, those were the only ways to play those games. Paper Mario, $164. I'm glad I got mine back in the day. And they believe they have some GameCube component cables over there. Resident Evil, the remake, Resident Evil 2, the port, Sonic 2 Battle. You know, I've never got into the GameCube version because I have the Dreamcast one. Wave Dash, wireless controller. Ooh, Tales of Symphonia, 39. I believe I have that at home. And Zelda Wind Waker for 95 and Twilight Princess for 169 The advantage of that one is that you've got a traditional GameCube layout and not Wii Waggle remotes. Moving on to N64. Hmm, Legacy of 
Darkness, 169. Where where did that go up in price? Wow. Donkey Kong, 64. Very cool. F-Zero, 57. Love F-Zero. Nintendo needs to make more F-Zero. I believe that is a PlayStation 2 to N64 adapter. Very cool, you don't see that every day. Namco Museum, very cool. There are Madden's Legacy of Darkness, Castlevania. I don't know, is that just the box? I'll have to inquire about it. That's just the box, but Castlevania, the original game, 199, 119, sorry. Hey you, Pikachu with the box, 139. Pokemon Stadium, a lot of boxed N64 games. Star Wars Episode One Eraser, love that. Majora's Mask, 93. And they have the Master's Quest down there. That is a repro cart. But, great way to play it. And a really cool purple N64 for I think 199 Looks like they have the special edition Nintendo Switch OLED with Tears of the Kingdom, the new one, $359. You know that limited editions, they always sell out and everyone's going to want the limited editions in the future but it looks like they have a pretty decent selection of modern nintendo switch games on little teeny tiny switch cartridges bayonetta 3 very cool animal crossing Kart Deluxe, Super Mario Odyssey, 45, amazing game. And a Nintendo Switch for 249. Not to be outdone by Nintendo, we have the Sega CD and Dreamcast section. They have an original Dreamcast over there next to the Dreamcast karaoke set. That's pretty rare, even in Japan. A lone copy of Shinobi for Sega Master System. Some Sega 32X games. And then on Sega CD, they have Sonic CD for $99 one of the best games ever and a new label for Sonic CD a loose one a Sega uh, Sega Dreamcast HDMI adapter and looking at the Dreamcast Crazy Taxi 2 love that game $49 and I don't see Crazy Taxi 1 but Crazy Taxi 2 is an amazing game as well Hydro Thunder for $49. That's one of the best versions of that game. And Jet Grind Radio, $89. That's really gone up in price, but that is just an amazing game. I would really love to see Sega release that on any modern thing. And JoJo Bizarre Adventure for $625. Wow. That's really gone up. Power Storm, Power Stone, four hundred and ninety, four hundred and forty-nine dollars for Power Stone. Wow. And one hundred and nine for just the disc. Perhaps I should trade in my old copy of Power Stone. Shenmue, absolute incredible experience, fifty-seven. Skies of Arcadia, 229. Glad I got that before it went up. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Space Channel 5 for 39. 
Time Stalkers. I'm always curious about that, but I don't think I've ever played it. Typing of the Dead. Amazing game, and you can't have Typing of the Dead without the Dreamcast keyboards. I have a Dreamcast keyboard and Typing of the Dead. Typing those zombies to the deaths. Moving on to Genesis. Genesis does what Nintendo don't Castlevania Bloodlines. They have a copy in the box there. Ghouls and Ghosts. Amazing game. Wonder Boy. I've always loved Sega Genesis Strider. Since the Sega Genesis came in a hard plastic game case for the for most of its life. There's a lot of really cool Sega Genesis games you can still find in the box. Moving on to the loose carts. Sonic and Knuckles with lock-on technology. Fantasy Star 4, amazing game for $85. Some of your Sonic hacks up there. And moving down to the Sega Saturn. Fighting Vipers. And Heroes, a Sega Saturn RAM backup RAM cart, and a cord, uh, cordless wireless controller for the Sega Saturn. That's a modern one, I believe. Moving on to the Game Boy Advance, they have Castlevania. Aria for $119. The first Castlevania game on Game Boy Advance, 32. Second one, 83. Really cool copy of Final Fantasy IV. Mario Kart, 35. Metroid Fusion, 79. And you got your Pokemons, 129 and 89 for Pokemon on Game Boy Advance. The version of Legend of Zelda for, where Link goes Hiya! every time he swings the sword, but that's a great version of that game and portable. <laughs> Boxed Golden Sun. And down to your Game Boy. Mario Land and Kirby. And going up there, they have Castlevania Legends for the third one, the expensive one. And your Pokemons for 69, 72, 65. Gotta catch them all. And Legend of Zelda DX for 68. You know, I need to get that get with the colored, the color version. And Wii U. Wii U is now a considered a retro system. And now that they've closed the Wii U store, a lot of times these are getting buying them on disc is the only way that you're going to get them. Nintendo actually put out a lot of really quality games on the Wii U. Very few other publishers did, but nowadays the only way that you can get them is on disc. The Xbox OG, we can't call it the Xbox One anymore because they actually use the term Xbox One. It pains me to think that the Xbox 360 is now considered retro. I'm always interested in that X Rock Band portable drum kit. Pip Boy for the Xbox One. And for you HD DVD fanatics, they have an Xbox 360 HD DVD player with a copy of Peter Jackson's King Kong on HD DVD. Hyperkin has made these really cool retro style controllers that are only on Xbox and I've really wanted them to make a PlayStation version. I would I recently cracked the glass on my phone, so if you see all these lens flares, that is what it's from. Super artsy. And if you really want a controller that really feels like you're holding something, there's the Hyperkin 
Duke for Xbox One. I actually really love Cyberpunk and I heavily recommend it, especially on modern hardware now that it's fixed. I really want to give a shout out to Blue Dragon. I absolutely loved that role playing game. It's one of the best role playing games that's currently only on Xbox 360, made character designs by Akira Toriyama. One of the best Japanese role playing games that no one is playing. Moving on to PlayStation 1, I'm really impressed that they have a sheet of PSM Magazine Memory Card stickers for 29 I have a lot of memories of those. Moving on, I see a Lundra 2, the 3D one, for $26. Bloody Roar, $65. Capcom vs. SNK Pro, $99. Not as good as the Dreamcast version, but still pretty darn good. But that version has Dan. But I don't know if you would consider that an advantage or not. Doom for PlayStation 2, or sorry, PlayStation Original for $62. Probably the best version of that game. And then moving on to your Final Fantasies. Final Fantasies Anthology, one of the best ways to play the original first two Final Fantasy games for 26. I still love the music on that. Final Fantasy Tactics, one of the best stories in a game. Incredible Crisis. Legends of Mana, $65. Siphon Filter. Soul Blade, the precursor to Soul Calibur. Tales of Destiny for $229. And the best racing game with the best soundtrack ever, Wipeout XL, $32. It looks best on a CRT. Moving on to the PlayStation Portable. You know, if I ever got into collecting another system, it's probably going to be PlayStation Portable because I got rid of all of my PlayStation Portable cartridges when I got a PlayStation Portable Go. And I sort of miss it because there's a lot of really good games that you could only get on PSP Disc. I also think the PSP Discs are just cool. Tekken Dark Resurrection, that's a great version of that game. And a lot of people love Star Wars Battlefront. Today is May the 4th. Crisis Core Final Fantasy and Castlevania, that's for PSP. That is an excellent 3D remake of Dracula X. A very small but well loved selection of PlayStation Vita games. And I'm impressed that they actually have a PS2 Slim vertical stand. I was looking for one for a very long time and had to import one from Japan. And finally, the PlayStation 2. Arcana Hearts, Ark the Lad. The PlayStation 2 has so many awesome both 3D games, 2D games, and you can play DVDs on it. The Bouncer by Capcom has a lot of games that don't mean a lot to me, but they do to some people. But if you're into your DDRs, look at that. A lot of great DDR games on the PlayStation 2. Final Fantasy, Garfield Lasagna World Tour, Gran Turismo, not only do you have the Grand Theft Auto games on PlayStation 2, but you got the PSP games which they ported to PlayStation 2. 
Guitar Hero rocks the 80s. The only way to get that game is on PS2. Some really colorful third-party controllers. King of Fighters 11, amazing game. King of Fighters 2003, the 3D versions. The last really good 2D game of King of Fighters on PS2 and a pretty decent 3D game. Your Maddens. Metal Gear 2 and 3. Monster Rancher. You know, PlayStation 2 is unique in that it was really supported by both Japanese and American game developers. Best of the West, Best of Japan. Psychonauts, $52. PlayStation 2 component cables. There's also a good HDMI solution for PlayStation 2 because the PS2 has RGB output. Rogue Galaxy, Romancing Saga, and Persona, Persona 4, $49. I'm glad that game recently got available on other platforms, but the OG version, PlayStation 2. I also have a soft spot for Herb's Sims in the City. Call me weird. Sonic Heroes and Sonic Mega Collection Plus. I didn't like the smoothing that they did on that particular collection. SSX3, SSX on tour, and your various Star Wars games. And Suikoden 3 for $239, Suikoden 4 for $52, $239 for Suikoden 3, wow. Tekken 4, $9. Tekken Tag Tournament, 14 Both amazing fighting games. Wild Arms 3, great, great game. And I have a soft spot for Virtual Fighter 4 for PlayStation 2. Total Games is one of the only places in Portland that actually has some alternative Game Boy cases for you to replace and mod your Game Boys. Oh my god, look who it is. Hi. I, I get around. I show up in unexpected places all the time. Yeah. So you shop here? Scandalous. Oh yeah, right, yeah, cool. it's the talk of well, the town right now. We are getting two more boxes. One is on hold for time. How many plushies do they have? So many. Plushies. Look at them all. Just look at them. My lord. Moving on to their import games section. I have to always remember that I got into collecting cartridges again by getting a copy of Super Mario World for Super Famicom here at Total Games. They have a box copy of Street Fighter 2 and a small selection of Super Famicoms. Over here they have some import Dreamcast games which I can play on my Dreamcast because I still have a boot disc. They got cool borders for Neo Geo Pocket for $199. They also have some Famicom Edition cartridges for Game Boy Advance. A couple Switch games, a Wii U game, some DS and 3DS games. A small but impressive PlayStation 1 selection of Japanese games. I am tempted to actually get a Japanese PlayStation 2 so I can play 
import Japanese PS1 and PS2 games, as well as Japanese DVDs. Jack Rose, rare, popular character, a game that did not sell very well, on a system that didn't sell very well, in the box. Really cool. I have one of these open, but a Capcom pad soldier actually looks really weird. Actually, very ergonomical, really fun to play with. 90. And like maybe you don't want to have a giant joystick, but you want to play Street Fighter by the way God and Capcom intended. for Arena Ultramix, $167 tarot set with a teddy bop included. Do you have a teddy bop in your life? I do not have a teddy bop in your life. But, you know, it's all things only professional, so do not make a boom bop joke at this point. The first thing that you see in TOTL games is a life-size statue of Solid Snake. I'll have to ask how the owner got that. Telegames, Atari 2600, but it's not Atari 2600, it's made by Telegames. A Nintendo Entertainment System Deluxe Set Complete in Box, Neo Geo X Limited Edition, and a seal, the Turbo Graphics, for $1,200. Magnavox Odyssey in the box. And some special edition, collector's edition sets of modern games. Like Blaster Master 3. And Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. While I was there, someone just traded in a Nintendo IQ. This is a plug and play N64 system that Nintendo made for the Chinese market that actually featured some downloaded games localized into Chinese. An absolutely interesting rare system for any Nintendo collector. This is the first I've ever seen one in person. Top of the Line Games is also well known for Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic, and they actually host Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. I still know next to nothing about competitive card games, but I tip my hats to the nerds that do. What did I end up buying? I got Nintendo Ice Hockey. One of the only sports games made by Nintendo that I actually am pretty nostalgic for. Originally made for the Famicom Disk System and then later released on cartridge in the US, Ice Hockey features car a cartoony approach to the game of hockey that is fast and easy to play and it features these different car sized cartoon characters. Nintendo Ice Hockey isn't a realistic take on the sport, but that's one of the reasons why it makes it fun. It is dripping with Nintendo fun goodness. Top of the Line Games, T-O-T-L Games, is one of the absolute best places to buy video games in not just Portland, Oregon, but I will darn say the entire world. Absolutely go check out TOTL Games. You're absolutely going to find some awesome things that you didn't know that you wanted. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It would really help growing this channel. This is 8-Bit Joystick. Thank you very much.